Hey, what's up, everyone? It's your girl, Sherelle. I'm the host of Let's Talk The Show, and this ain't a podcast. I want to thank you guys for joining me this Tuesday like you guys do every Tuesday. We have an amazing show in store for you. Before we get started, make sure you go ahead, click the link in my bio, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. We are trying to reach 100 subscribers before the year is out. We don't have that much time, so I really need everybody to click, 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 subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Um, and yeah, so let's get us there, guys. Uh, moving forward, you guys know how the routine goes. Before we get into the episode, we got to start off with something that you're grateful for. Um, I'll say that today I am grateful for... Uh, what are you guys faithful for? I'm so about faithful for. Grateful for. You know, I can't kick it off um, without saying, asking what are you grateful for. Um, so I'm starting you guys off. What are you grateful for? Drop in my comment section. I see you guys are coming in. Hello, hello, everyone. What are you grateful for? I'm going to go ahead and start it off. I am grateful for faith. That is what I'm grateful. I'm super grateful for faith. Um, Yeah. Yeah, I'm super grateful for faith. You all can see I got this on because my hair is like not even, it's not even not done. It's just hit underneath this. Um. And go ahead. I need at least one person to drop in the comment section something that they are grateful for. You guys, I told you to bring some wine. I got some wine here. It's super dark, but we got some wine here. We're going to talk about these books today, okay? I got some books here. We're going to talk about some books I've been reading, why I think you should be reading, and some great places to find some really good books, okay? You guys are probably not going to believe some of the places that I find books, but... It's okay, because I'm going to help you find some good books too, right? Um, so make sure you drop in my comment section something that you're grateful for. Um, let's see. Just to wake up and live and learn. Amen. Okay? As long as you got another day and some more breath in your body, you cannot go wrong. So we're going to jump right into it. I got that one person that's grateful. This episode is about why you should start back reading. Um, and I want to be very careful because everybody's reason is not the same, but I'm going to tell you why. I feel like... When you are ready to get your life in order, you're probably going to start back reading. When you're ready to make changes in your life and be a better person and just excel in life overall, you're going to start reading. And the reason is because there's only so many lives that you can watch. There's so many, there's only so many people you can ask, uh, so many interviews you can watch. Sometimes it's just really good to just relax and just read and see somebody and read somebody else's thoughts. You know what I'm saying? So I think that you will start back reading when you really want to make a life change. I could be wrong, but that's for me. That's how it worked for me. When I was really ready to make a life change, I started back reading. Um, I'm grateful for peace. I'm liking that scarf. Thank you. Okay. I know when I put this scarf on, this scarf will get me in a chokehold. I will wear this motherfucker 10 days straight. Okay. Um, that's how I know it's time for me to get my hair done. When I got to pull this out, this thing has a chokehold on me. <laughs> so, yeah, it's about time to get my hair done again. I just miss my natural hair, honestly. So, i just been letting it be crazy and wild and stuff. But, yeah, so I think you will start back reading when you are ready to make a serious life change and break some habits. Um, when you're really ready to just do the shit that you said you always wanted to do, right? And I feel like I started this kind of... That's why I started back. I was really ready to make some life changes. And ever since then, I've been dropping a lot of things, breaking bad habits. I'll say that. I've been breaking a lot of bad habits. Um, so we're going to jump into the books that I've started reading. Um, so I think... I've always kind of read books. Now that I think about it, um, I've read a lot of books over the years. I really didn't give myself credit and it's probably because I was comparing myself to people on social media thinking, oh, I'm not reading 10 books a year. I must not be reading enough in, in reality when I look back. And I think about all the books that I've read, especially when I was like young and I felt like I was not doing as well. I read a lot of books. Um, I know I read Devon Franklin's The Weight. That was a really good book. And that book actually took me on a, a trip for celibacy. I was like, or abstinence. I don't know. Is it celibacy or abstinence? I think it was probably like celibacy, but I read that book a long time ago. It was a great book, okay? When you want to, and a lot of people are like, well, hello, you, how much sex you been having? You want to stop? It's like, it's not necessarily you've had a lot of sex. It's just that sex, like anything else, can be a distraction. And I feel like it's super common for people that are not in long term committed relationships to go on these celibacy breaks, um, to go celibate or whatever. It's like, it's just a distraction. It's not feeding what I needed to feed. It's not in a, a long term committed relationship. Um, and honestly, I just really want to get on my grind and I want to focus on me. 
Um, so you cut a lot of things off. People, you know, people do the same thing when it comes to certain foods. They stop eating pork and things like that. And it really just overall improves your mental health, I think. Um, some people say it didn't make them a difference. Some people say they can't do it. Um, I think that when you can control your emotions, you can control them and everything else in your world, pretty much. Um, so, yeah, I read Devon Franklin's a while back. Um, I read The E-Myth Revisited. That is a really good book for people that wants to start that wants to start businesses. Give me one moment. I didn't grab that. One second. I'll grab that for you guys. Uh, okay. <sighs> Sorry about that. So yeah. So I'll show you guys the ebook revisited. This is uh this is a really great book. It says the e-myth revisited why most small businesses don't work and what to do about it. Great book, easy read, easy read super good like i think i looked at the resale value for this book at one point it was super high and yeah and a guy that's super successful in life that i was dating at one point gave me this book and i still have it um and that also leads me to you know want to talk about how you get these books um another good book which is another avenue to um get books this book was actually sent to me early on social media from a friend on social media i met a guy on social media and um, he actually gave me this book, sent it to me, bought them brand new. He had bought like a couple of them brand new. Um, and he ended up sending me this one. And this is The Miseducation of the Negro. Um, yeah. And you guys, if you paid attention there, I told you where I got that book from, right? So you should really start back reading, honestly, to help yourself get into a routine, to get a better perspective on life. I find myself really interested in books that um, have to deal with self-improvement or there are books about people's lives that I have listened to as far as music or movies. Like you guys may see, I'm reading a Gucci Mane, which I've really been super slow on reading. Um, but I just, I grew up liking Gucci Mane, you know? And I and it was a cheaper book. Obviously, it was a cheaper uh, read So than the other book I wanted to get, right? So I grabbed that. Um, and it was super, super good. Um, so another thing is... When you, when you want to start back reading, I also want to talk to you guys about how to read. You're like, I already know how to read, Sherelle. I don't need you to teach me how. When I mean how to read, I mean as far as scheduling, when time when is a good time to read, um, when it comes to actually ingesting the book or digesting the book, rather. A lot of people, I feel like, just read books so often that they never have time to really take in a book. But that could just be me. Um, it's, I think that a good time to read a book is whenever you have free time. But pick a time that works for your schedule. I know for me, I was getting up at like 8 o'clock in the morning, working out, showering, and making sure I got time to set my intentions for the day with work. And I was picking up a book to read. I would set maybe five minutes a day to read, and that would be five minutes in the morning. And then maybe sometimes I would be maybe out running errands or I was taking someone somewhere. I would bring my book alone, and I would make sure that in a car, if my son had his toy, I would read. You know, I think that when you're not you know, an avid reader and you're not consistently doing it, it's really important, like with anything else, to schedule time to do it. Because when you force yourself to do it, it's going to make the world a difference. And it's also important that if you really want to read, cut out TV. Cut out something that you normally do that's really not good for you. Like, I would be quick to uh, maybe take care of business and get Netflix in the background, right? So then I was like, you know what, I'm not even going to watch Netflix I'm going to pick up a book, read for about five minutes, and I will make that a part of my work. And believe it or not, reading when it came to scheduling content and creating content was super helpful in keeping a schedule. Even if I was not motivated to work, I could always be like, you know what, I know I need to pick up that book and read five minutes today. And that would honestly motivate me. So the idea that uh, becoming disciplined in one area will roll over into other areas is super true. I would knew I had to read for five minutes that day. Man, all right, I'm going to read for five minutes. And I know right after that, I'm going straight into work. I would feel so motivated after already reading and sticking to my goal that I would be motivated to do whatever else it was that needed to get done. Because, you know, sometimes you don't like doing shit. Even the shit that needs to get done, you don't want to do, right? So definitely schedule time to read. Schedule it. Don't be re unrealistic. Like, I, I know damn well I wasn't reading half a fucking book at night. I got a kid. I got a business. I got my own shit to deal with. I ain't about to be making some unrealistic expectations. Read your book on your own schedule at your own pace. And take the time to really digest what you're reading. Sometimes you might need to go back and read that page again. 
Sometimes, I'm going to tell you, I'm not even going to cap to y'all. I am a big person of underlining words in a book that I ain't never fucking seen before. I am 27. There's some shit I ain't never seen before or words used in ways I've never understood before. I will underline that shit, Google the fuck out of it, read the definition, look for examples, like, oh, okay, I kind of get it, then go back and read it just to put the whole page into perspective, like, oh, okay, now I get it, right? Again, another reason you should read, increase your vocabulary, okay? Increase your vocabulary. Another reason you should read is that when you read books and people aren't reading, it really gives you an upper hand in conversations. I'm a little egotistical. Maybe some people say a lot. Maybe I'm not egotistical. But when you read, it really gives you a different insight in conversations. You can sit down and have conversations with people about things that maybe other people can't because they don't read. Um, and I know the, the old quote goes, if you want to hide something from a nigga, put it in a book because they don't read. Very true. Very, very, very true, especially when it comes to autobiographies. A lot of people just see these people on social media or they read gossip blogs and they don't necessarily read their book. So when it comes, not saying that you, you know, you have to know everything about a celebrity, but it's like if you really follow somebody and you admire and you admire their work, read the autobiography, you know, and look into other areas of their life. It's going to be like, damn, I didn't know. So maybe when you and your friends sit down talking, you're like, damn, you know, Gabrielle Union, XYZ or Gucci Mane did XYZ. It's like, damn, how you know that? It's like, girl, her book. You gotta read her book. Like, bitch, for real? You're like, yeah, you know? So it really gives you an upper hand in conversations. Um, it improves your vocabulary. It really teaches you to follow a routine if you really are intentional about reading. Um, you also educate other people. You know what I'm saying? Somebody read a book somewhere and told somebody else what was in it, and then they went and got it. You know what I'm saying? So it really can improve all areas of your life. Reading a book, it sounds crazy, is helped me to like learn to listen more. I know I don't even I can't I'm not even gonna cap I don't even know the correlation between that but reading a book really helped me to listen more because I had I either had to read it out loud repeat it back and understand things and it really taught me to focus on what is being is happening right now so read a book improve your listening skills okay and you can't go wrong listening to people right that's why you got two ears and one mouth listen twice as much as you talk I'm probably working on that because I ain't got that far yet, y'all. But definitely, those are really just some good reasons that you should start back reading. Those are great reasons that I've started back reading. Those are some of the benefits of reading. Um, and while I go through great places to find books, because I've already kind of spilled the beans with you guys, um, I always talk. Let me get to some of you guys' comments. Yes, the mis miseducation of the Negro reading this one. Yes. I think there is a longer version of this book. But the guy on um, Instagram, I think he just bought it and sent us copies. And so I still got my wine here. I'm going to take a sip. If y'all pay attention, I told y'all to bring some wine today because this was like my version of a book club, right? Um, so yeah, like this book was not that long. And I also, don't ever confuse the length of a book with whether or not it's an easy read. Things like the mis this is a pretty it's you know it's a pretty decent read it's like jam packed with information though um so it's like while it is only seventy one pages it's a lot of shit to take in and I'm not gonna lie if I ever read a book that I thought was triggering to the way I was brought up and the things in the way that I thought this book was actually a really triggering book I never thought I could be like who the fuck you think you is like in a book though but this book made me do that like um. Yeah, I'll read you guys. Uh, I have so many things underlined. I'll show you here. You probably won't be able to see, but like, let me show you something. You guys can see right there. Things underlined, written in. Um, yeah, like because this book is so. This book is a is um is a decent read. It's a lot is a lot of stuff in a little bit of time. Like a lot of information. I'll give you guys a quote out of the book. Um, and this one is something that really stuck to me. It says. If you can control a man's thinking, you do not have to worry about his action. When you can determine what a man shall think, you do not have to concern yourself about what he will do. This, this book, okay? This book. I would tell y'all, I would ship this to one of y'all. But that little quote alone kind of got me ready to bust it back open and, and get the read again and, and compare, you know, what I think about social media now in the black community. Um, but yeah, so before I go any further, what good books are you guys reading? Um, that's a crazy quote of all quotes to read. Um, I ain't gonna break that quote down in regards to what the white people do with the black people, but that's a damn good quote out of that book. That's a good little quote. Um, uh, what books are you guys reading? Have you guys started back reading? Um, talk to me in the comments. What are you guys reading right now? 
I am currently reading. I got a receipt. I currently see my little receipt in there. I'm currently reading Gucci Mane, the autobiography of Gucci Mane with Neil Martinez Belkin. Um, and it is a New York Times bestseller. So what are you guys reading right now? Um, I'm the type of person that Googles every fucking thing. Like it said with Neil Martinez, Martinez Belkin. I Google that nigga. I follow him on Instagram now. Like I'm that type of person. I will find some shit out or see some shit and get to following people on social media. Somebody says Queenology by Pastor R.C. Blakes Jr. You know what? Outside of Divine Franklin, I have yet to pick up a book by a pastor. I've been wanting to pick. I think T.D. Jakes has a book. But I've been wanting to pick up something and say, this book's help you find your queen consciousness. Just been, ooh. Okay. Let's talk about that. What made you pick up that book? I want to help you find your queen consciousness. What made you pick up that book, Chelsea? So, yeah. While Chelsea, we were waiting for Chelsea. You said, I am into self-help books. I love self-help books. Like, I'll tell you this one. I think a lot of, and I'll say this, a lot of books that may not necessarily be self-help books are a lot of African-American history books because they really, um, to me, help improve your relationship with yourself, how you think about yourself, how you view yourself, how you view your community, which in turn has a lot to do with how you interact with yourself. So a lot of self-help books are not just labeled self-help. A lot of them have a lot to do with African-American history. So definitely keep that in mind. This one is legit. I'm going to check that out. I'm going to see if I can find maybe an audible. Another thing, I know um, it said I'm into self-help books. I And I'm sorry, let me not ignore your question. I mean, your comment. I am also into very much self-help books. I think the very first book I bust open this year till I really kick-started was a self-help book. Um, and I want to say this. I don't, I'm not going to, I don't have any really good or bad things to say about audible. I've used them before when I was younger. I don't use them now. I really prefer a handheld book. Like I need a hard book to read. I'm I'm the type of person that um I don't like to type my notes out. I like to write my notes out and I'm very old school when it comes to reading as well. Audible is to me is something super convenient for people though. It's something you can listen to on the go, on a plane, on a train, whatever. But I am a hard hardcover person. I need to physically be able to hold a book and read it, especially for me to be entertained. The same thing goes for, like, that's why I don't do a podcast because I need to be interactive with you guys. I need to be able to see you, talk to you, things at that moment. And I just can't get with a recording and then you guys tell me I don't like that. So I'm a very hardcover book, but Audible is something great to try. You can always um, get free trials. And I believe that if you go to your local library that they may be able to give you um, books on Audible. You may be able to work something. I'm not sure how that goes, but you might be able to. Well, I was watching his YouTube videos, past R.C. Blakes, and he talks about how if you see yourself as a queen, you would find the right mate. Ooh, hey, man. Ooh, I like that. I think finding a good mate is also about aligning yourself with it. Um, If what I'm doing right now works out with the person I'm dating, you guys, I'm going to tell you what I did, okay? I ain't trying to be Sierra. I don't know if I got no special extra prayer, but I'm going to tell y'all what I did if it works out, Okay. Um, it's about, let me see here. It's about Dan Time by Arlene Hamilton. What is that about? What is, it's, a, it's about Dan Time. That's not like a good book though. I like cuss words. Y'all know me. I like cussing. I want to be a cuss word. <laughs> I love cussing. I really want to be a cuss word, y'all. Y'all, I cuss every episode because cusses, I don't know. It's, I just love it. I don't know why. Um, I said, thank you. Please send me info about Queenology, Chelsea. Very interesting. Listen to it on Audible. Okay. And you said it's about damn time. I'm going to look into that. You guys, you guys know I love cussing. That is the truest form of me, okay? I love cussing. And it, and I love cussing so much, I read a book, The Subtle Art and Not Giving a Fuck, okay? Right? Because this is how true I am to myself. I saw this bright orange-ass book, and I saw some cuss words. I was like, oh, bitch, I need to read that, okay? That is my type of book. Um... But yeah, I love cussing y'all. Okay, so I'm going to start telling you guys where are some great places you can find books. Um, and business for homeless. Oh, okay. Oh, that's a nice, I mean, that's not a nice story, but that's definitely, I would love to read that. I would love to read that. Just listening to you say that she's done her business from being homeless, um, it really makes me think of that show on Netflix, The Maid. She she went through a lot. I ain't gonna tell y'all, but she, eventually she was homeless. 
at one point and then she got a job and then she stole her job's clients and then she's like starting her own cleaning business so really a good show to watch on netflix but it sounds very similar not uh sure how deep their their plots go together but yeah she's doing that on the, the main netflix i like that anyways let's get back to it so book i busted open the early beginning the early of this year was the subtle art of not giving a fuck right um this book i like books that um make me laugh like i like book humor in books sometimes you read a book and they're like oh it's a sci-fi i can't get into scary stuff in books like if that makes sense i can't read a scary book and be scared like i read this shit and laughed out loud but i won't be able to read a book and get like scared or nothing so the subtle art not giving a fuck a counter intuitive approach to living a good life it really is talking about basically where to fit, place your fucks. Like, you should give a fuck about life, but you should not get a many fucks about the dumb shit. Um, it also talks about the constant that this constant good vibes only thing that the world has got going on is super bad. It's like really bad for us. People do not want to stay upset for long. They do not want to stay mad for long. They just want to be good vibes only. And while I understand that you don't want to experience bad stuff and negative energy, you have to understand that um, bad things and bad energy and bad experiences really shape and make the great moments what they are, right? Um, I was actually watching a, a video, uh, some type of documentary or something that said we have five senses, you know, sight. Oh, I ain't about the name because I y'all ain't about to give me I'm like crazy. <laughs> we have five senses. Y'all know the five senses, right? And then they were talking about how pain is another sense because pain lets you know when something is wrong, right? And this book kind of talks of kind of how negative experiences, you know, not necessarily are another sense, but that pain and bad things really shape you. They make you who you are. Um, so all this good vibes, when you only want to be in good vibes only and you never want to experience the bad stuff, you're really losing out. Bad things make the good days good. You went, you know, joy wouldn't feel so good if it wasn't for pain. I don't know who said it, but it's a song, you know. Um, but yeah, that's the reality. This book really talks about giving a fuck. Um, you should definitely give a fuck where to place your fucks and that, you know, giving a fuck is a good thing. You know, you need to feel pain sometimes it makes you realize what you're doing wrong you know you need to see what bad energy looks like so you can really appreciate and see what good energy looks like you know and a lot of people like i'm good vibes only i'm blocking off any bad energy and it's like if you are only existing in a good space you're never going to be able to fail and grow and learn because you don't learn in success you learn in failure you figure out what you did wrong so you can do it better and get the good part you know what i'm saying so this is really what that book is about um the other book i really that's probably not even the first maybe that is the first one i know i read earlier this year the four agreements i'm not gonna lie to y'all when i first started reading that book that shit was so confusing okay it had all these terminology i never knew i'm like i don't know what the fuck this nigga talking about and i was really about to be like i'm not reading it anymore but it was a great read i actually have um one of the four agreements which is don't take anything personal on my refrigerator I'm actually going to put all five of them, uh, four of them up. Um, and the four agreements, I believe, are don't take anything personal. Don't make any assumptions. Be impeccable with your word. And do your best. Those are the four agreements. When you do those four things, your life is bound to change. I can say, honestly, the now that I don't take things personal, I I feel like it's so much easier for me to have boundaries with people. I don't When I don't take personal what you did to me, I have no attachment. I don't have a reason to to go through this whole making assumptions about how you feel about me, what you thought about me, how I'm going to get you back. Like when I just don't take it personal and realize that what you do says more about you than it does me. It's so easy to let shit go. It's so easy to move on, on a better path. Um, not making assumptions is so much easier. If I give enough fucks to make an assumption about it i probably need to ask you about it it just really improves our relationships with people improves your relationship with yourself my mental health like went through the fucking roof like it's just so much easier to manage emotions and manage my just really manage my own emotions when it's like i ain't taking that shit personal you know what i'm saying especially when it comes to having a kid you know my kid acting crazy in the store i'm like why you want to act like this you know sometimes you're like why your kid why you want to act like this why you want to treat me like this and it's like you, how you acting? It got nothing to do with me. It's really you. Because my kid ain't even big enough to really process emotions. How he acting right now is not really a reflection of me. It's really a reflection of what he got going on inside. You know, how people treat you, 
it ain't really got nothing to do with me, baby. That's how you feel. You know what I'm saying? Now, you may how you feel may be a reflection of me. I mean, it may be a reflection of how you feel about me. But it really ain't me. That's how you feel. That's how you internalize those things. I would definitely recommend the four agreements to anybody that really wants to improve their mental health. If you really want to just stop being so overwhelmed, so overworked, so stressed out, so worried, read that book. That book is truly going to bring you down to a level that does not require you to even stress about nothing else nobody else got going on. In a, in a truest sense, that shit ain't got nothing to do with me. Like, that's really that book. If I have to sum the four agreements up, in a word, in a phrase, that shit ain't got nothing to do with me. That is literally that book. That shit ain't got nothing to do with me. And it really encourages you to be your best self. It really encourages you to give yourself grace. It's like when you do the best that you can do, that's all that you can do. And it kind of releases that idea that you should be perfect. Do the best you can do every single time and you cannot go wrong. Stick to your word as much as you possibly can and you cannot go wrong. If I said I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it. And if I can't, I'm going to acknowledge that and communicate that. And if I show up as my best self every time, I can't be mad. Because obviously there was nothing else for me to do about it. You know, it really relieves you of that idea to be perfect, of that stress, of trying to meet these impossible standards. And really gives you back that grace, that patience with yourself so that you can grow and be a better you. Um, that's a really great book. Um, this is another, I got another good book. Uh, so I'll tell you guys two books. So one book that I have not read that even when it was released has changed my life is Every Day Make Your Bed. That is by Danielle Hughes. She is from Detroit, Michigan. You guys look her up. Danielle D. Hughes on social media. She has a book out that calls, that says Make Your Bed Every Day. Or it might be Make Your Bed or it might be Make Your Bed Every Day. Either way it go, I never bought the book. I definitely want to buy that book. And I'm probably going to do it before the year's up because I'm going to finish Gucci Mane. That's on my next to read list. And... I never read her book. I love the way she promoted it. I love the market, everything about it. Guess what, guys? Every single day I make my bed. And I, you can probably find somewhere on social media I've said, if I don't make my bed that day, I probably had a shitty day. Like, no cap. I attribute any day that I've had a fuck that day is the day that I probably did not make my bed. And I can genuinely feel when the day is fucking off. I will go through some shit. I'll come home and I look at my room. Like, fuck, I didn't make my bed. That's That's got to be what happened. Sounds crazy, but I'm a little superstitious like that. If I don't make my bed, it's probably a fucked up day. Uh, let me make sure I get to you guys. It's the inspiration. Amen. Yes, so true. Um, so, yeah. Make Your Bed Every Day is a great book by Daniel Hughes. I have not read it, but I've seen the reviews and it looks amazing. I know it's amazing. I'm super. I admire her so much. She's a Detroit author as well. This is another great book, Epiphanies Within by Brittany Michelle. You guys may have recalled. I interviewed her a while back. She was the one that she's a she's an author as well. Uh, she's a screenwriter now and if you guys recall she was the one that said i do not only want to sit at the table i want to have influence at the table and that is a great quote um and i love that quote right i need to put that on the shirt so i can um make some money brady i'm gonna talk to you about that um but yeah this is one of her first books that she wrote epiphanies within y'all let me tell you the way Brittany wrote this book i'm gonna tell y'all some of the stuff that's in this book too because the way she wrote this book is like she was talking to you. It's like a conversation with your homegirl. No lie. It's one of the craziest books. Not crazy. It's one of the best, like, conversational books ever I've ever read. It's like she's sitting here talking to me, right? Here we go. I highlighted a quote in her book as well. And, and the one thing I love about this book, about Epiphanies Within, is that there's a lot of scripture there. She quotes God so much. And I love that. I love to be able to reference back to my source. Um, and it really is really great when you can read a book that really aligns a lot with your values. Um, so yeah, I'm going to read, I'm going to read two of them. One says, if you don't appreciate someone while they're good to you, you cannot be mad when they decide to be good to someone else. Okay. I really feel like that's to the niggas that don't be appreciating their women. Dog mom didn't get mad when she was somebody else that, that appreciate a good woman. Okay. Um, you can't be mad at nobody at that. And then I have another one. It says Proverbs 23, 7. For so a man thinketh, so is he. And I really love that. I actually probably want to get that tattoo now that I think about it. I really love that because a lot of quotes on social media say, whether you believe you can or believe you can't, you're right. And I think that is a direct interpretation from that Proverbs 23, 7. Whether you believe you can or you can't, you're right. You're right. And the Bible say that. The Bible says that. 
which also you know makes me makes it to me a little conflicting but whatever so that's another great book that i read i'm gonna tell you guys i'm gonna go through one more and then we're gonna tell you great places to find these books i do not want to drag this out guys beloved is by the amazing okay i don't even want to cuss when i talk about her the amazing tony morrison she passed i believe back in 2019 2020 she is an amazing author okay her and james baldwin oh my god I love them. Let me tell you, I was just really learning about James Baldwin and Toni Morrison and really getting into their works. If you guys ever want to really know about Toni Morrison, before you pick up a book, there is a documentary on her on Hulu. It's called The Art of Toni Morrison or The Artworks of Toni Morrison. She talks about all the great books that she's written. Um, another thing that I love about Toni Morrison is that she really, watching her in that documentary really reassured me about myself. I felt like because I wasn't at all the protests and every time they were meeting when it was, you know, during the pandemic and the things were happening with Black Lives Matter, I was feeling like, well, maybe I'm not really supporting my people. And Toni Morrison talks about that in her book because she said she was a writer. And she was like, I can't be at all these protests, but I'm still contributing to my people because everybody has a role. And she said, they may be out there protesting. They may be out there fighters, but that's their role to protest in a fight. My role is to write. And I said, God damn, Tony, that's it. That's what I needed. I can't be there every protest. I can go when I can go. And when I can't, I can't. And my job ain't really to be out there to, to be fighting and protesting all the time. Maybe my job is to be out here telling everybody else that ain't out there protesting and fighting right and to get the people that follow me if they ain't on board already on board right so that tony morrison really inspired me in that sense her book beloved um is it really talks about slavery she's a really great author i can't really go in too fast but um she's a great author her and james baldwin i'm a huge james baldwin fan i have a pen that has james baldwin on it because i rocked the long way with james okay jimmy that's my dog right so moving forward, I'm going to make sure I tell you guys great places to find books. Make sure you write these down if you can't make some notes in your phone, but don't exit out of this live, right? And I know I've gotten so far into it. If you guys could, please click the arrow in the lower right corner and share this live with three friends that you think would love this conversation. I only got so caught up in talking, I forgot to tell you all to share it. Make sure you share this. The only way to really spread the news about a great show or something that you love is to share it. I really appreciate everybody that shares my stuff, that comments, that reposts. Um, that participates everything everything really means a lot because a lot of times our, sh our posts are not being shown people are not finding out about these great shows and the really best way to tell people about great shows that you love is to share it okay so three great places to find books that you probably never thought of okay and i'm coming to you number one social media boom this is where i got this book from a guy i told you he's my friend on social media he's still my friend on social media right now social media sometimes your friends now nah, i don't even want to say your friends sometimes your followers the people you following post books do you not want to pay because some books are 30 dollars you don't want to pay 30 dollars for that book shoot them dm hey can i buy that book off you for 10 dollars? and they may sell it to you they may not but my thing is that it does not hurt to ask people that are posting books that you want to read if they finish the book, ask them, hey, can I buy that book from you? $10, $12 included, you know, let them know, hey, I pay the shipping or whatever. Can you send it to me? That's the number one place. It's so odd. People never think about it. I've asked people, again, I got this book from a friend on social media. All right. He sent it to me. He sent it to me for a charge. He was really about educating his people. Um, he graduated from HBCU, I believe. So that really, you know, sealed the deal. But he was super excited to educate his people and spread the news. And he sent me the book for free. Um, I don't know if I'm going to get this book away. Maybe I'll get another one of these books away. But social media, Instagram, Facebook, great place to look for um, look for books. And I'm going to put this in an asterisk under one. Facebook Marketplace. Also, a lot of people only buy, sell, clothes, or whatever they do on Facebook Marketplace. Look for books. Super, super great place to look for books. Easy buy, okay? Number two, and I'd say number two strongly because... Five below is the spot to go, okay? That is where I bought the four agreements for like $3. I have went in five below in their little book section and found amazing books. I didn't buy them all because I knew I wasn't going to read them, right? So I ain't harm myself and I ain't wasting my money. Five below. A lot of people underestimate five below. You can go on five below and find some amazing books, okay? Maybe not just books to read, but little activity books for you. Um, I did have a journal that said burn after you read. I don't know if you guys remember that journal. It was a journal you filled out with like a thousand questions. And after you were done, you burned the journal. 
I bought that for like $2 from Five Below. Great journal, great way to exercise and get out some things that would bother me and burn it up afterwards. Great little healing technique, I guess. And I bought the four agreements from Five Below for like $4. Listen, a lot of people be sleeping on them. Don't sleep on them. Go get them. And then, here we are. The last place that I think is a great place to look for if you want to buy books. Hear me out. The thrift store. Yes, the Salvation Army Family Goods store. Any thrift store. Dollar stores, okay? So we're going to say stores. And when I say stores, I'm not meaning Myers, Blurns, and Nobles. I mean the thrift store. If you really are a really good bargain hunter and you know people that thrift store hunt, um, don't do don't look down look on these people, okay? Don't look down on these people. The, there are people that go thrift shopping that make six figures a year and use that as a resale business. Don't look down on it. A lot of people also find a lot of good records like um, vinyls at thrift stores, okay? So if you want to find a good book for a good price, it might be a little damaged or whatever, but you know, thrift store. Look at the thrift store. Also look at Dollar Tree, specifically Dollar Tree because they usually resell books that um again for like a dollar i know their price is going up sometime later in the year but thrift stores and dollar tree specifically i found great i found a good black kids book like random ass kid book no lie at dollar tree super random i was just you know looking because they usually have coloring books and things but it was a good black kids book I was like, oh shit i'm getting this if i can find it i'll show you guys um but yeah so make sure you guys do that those are three gay places social media Ask one of your friends. They post a book you want. Ask them if you can pay for it. Don't ever ask anything for free because they spent their money. They ain't giving that shit away for free. And if you come up, you know, if you look up and see the book is $20, hey, I'll give you $15 for it, including shipping. You know, ship it to me. I'll buy it. Oh, they might give it to you. Second place. Um, What was the second place I told you guys? Five Below is a great place. I found great books at Five Below. Different locations sell different things. They don't all sell the same thing. So shop around for them. You can find. Third place, thrift stores. Dollar Tree to be specifically and don't forget Facebook marketplace is always a great place to find books for discounted prices Some people are even giving books away for free um, So yeah, and you know, I'm gonna give you guys for honorable mention ask your friends if your friends read ask your friends You don't have to have the book, but hey, can I use that? Can I read? The, I really want to read it. Can I read that book? I'll give it back to you when I'm done Yeah, some people will and you know what else that does like I said once you read a good book and your friend read it What does that do? Open the door for conversation. Improve the conversations that you have with your friends, right? Improve your vocabulary, right? You guys can read the same book, get two different meanings from it. And that way you're able to discuss different perspectives. Improve your own perspective, right? You can't go wrong with that. Um, but yeah, so you guys, that's all I got for you. Why you should read, the benefits of reading, why I started reading, the books that I love. Great places to look for books that most people do not say. Social media, five below, thrift stores, honorable mention, uh, your contacts in your phone, let me make sure I give you guys comments. I make my bed every day as well. Girl, I have to. I'm trying to tell you. My mom used to do it when we were younger, like make us like make our bed. But I don't know. I don't think I really like making my bed as a kid. But now, if I have a bad day, I'm pretty sure it's because I did not make my fucking bed. Like I, I literally would come on like fuck. If I would have made my bed, I would have had a good day. Like, you know. So superstitious in that way, if you will. Awesome episode. Thank you so much. Thank you guys for joining and sticking and staying. I always appreciate it. Make sure you guys click that little arrow right there and share this episode with three friends you think will love this conversation. Um, you know, I got to go out the same way I came in. Drop in my comment section something that you guys are grateful for. I am going to say that I am grateful for... I'm grateful for today's conversation as well. I, I was really kind of hesitant about this episode. I'm not going to lie. I didn't think people was really going to give a fuck about no books. Um, you know, I really didn't give a fuck about... I was like, man, these niggas don't give a fuck about no books. I really wanted to just share something with y'all that's really that I've been doing that I really like. Um, and I just really thought it could be helpful to somebody. And I really was like, I ain't really going to promote it like that. that. I'm literally saying all this. And the only reason I really changed that was because Devon Franklin made a post that says, when God tells you to move, move. And it really was in me like, Sherelle, no, promote this episode for real. And I'm like, man... I ain't really going to do it. But when I saw that Devon Franklin post on social media, once I got home, I posted it everywhere. I'm like, yo, we got to have a new, you know, you guys know it's a new episode, but you ain't know what it was about. And I really didn't promote it. After I saw Devon Franklin's post, I started promoting it. And I'm really glad that I did. Um, I'm really glad that I saw that post and that it encouraged me. I hope you guys learned something. Hope you guys find some great books. Every book that I talked about today, I will put in our story tonight. Um, and I will let you know what I'm willing to ship to you. You know, if I got a book I want to give away, I, I might give away a book or two um, and ship it to you. So 
stay tuned after this episode check out our story i'll have some books i'll have every book that i read and then I'll, i may post a book or two that i'm willing to give away to you guys um so yeah that's what i'm grateful for i'm grateful for tonight's conversation somebody said i am grateful for my health you can't go wrong okay you cannot go wrong with being healthy it don't matter how much money you got in the world when you sick you sick and can't nobody help you but god um, I saw somebody say that if you don't take care, if you don't make time for your wellness, you won't have to make time for your illness. Okay, and you never lied. This episode was much needed because I just started reading again. Wow, you did say that. You know, you did say that. And I was like, much needed. You know, and I, you know, sometimes when you're a creator, you really kind of take for granted the work you do when you don't see the return that you want to see. But you saying, I really appreciate that. I, I'm glad I did it. I'm glad. I'm glad. I'm glad you really got something out of this. And thank you. I'm, you know what, you guys? Let me see something really quick here. Bear with me here just one second. All right. So I'm super grateful. Um, I'm glad you enjoyed this episode. I hope y'all had some wine. Maybe y'all didn't. I had some wine. It's not that good. Um, but I'm a little bit of alcohol. If I bought it, I'm a drink it type shit. So. <laughs> anyway, you guys. Um. I gave y'all that I'm grateful for this episode today as well. I'm going out the same way I came in. As always, I want to thank my beautiful audience. I cannot do this without you guys. I'm super grateful to have you here. Thank you guys for sticking and staying for tonight's episode. Um, you said I'm over here sipping on this water. <laughs> I ain't mad at you. Um, so yeah, thank you guys for joining me tonight. I really appreciate it. This is really good. Like this is better than I thought. Um, I thank you guys for that. This was this was a bomb ass episode. Um yeah, this is super dope. Um, but as usual, my name is Sherelle Carter, you guys. I'm the host of Let's Talk the Show, and this ain't a podcast. I'll see you guys next Tuesday.